Today, I have guests who are talking about safe use of medication in elderly people. In studio, I have Emily and Jacqueline. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Looking Thank you. lovely, ladies. <laughs> yeah, you're taking over this world. Yeah? Indeed. Now, Emily, I'll start with you. Yes, please. Just introduce yourself and tell us, is it true that people are living longer today? Yeah, I'm called Ajambo Emily. I'm a senior gerontologist at the Ministry of Gender, Labor and Social Development. Yes. Specifically in the Department of Disability and Elderly. Mm. And as I said, indeed, people are living longer. Yeah. First of all, who is an older person? Yeah. An older person is someone who is 60 years and above. If you clock 60 years and above, <laughs> You become an older person. You have disappointed so many people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that's yeah. the definition we take as mm. a country. Yeah, people are living longer simply because there is a lot of advancement in in yeah, healthcare. Yes, mm. We are seeing a lot of uh, technology mm. taking over healthcare. People mm. can access the services they need. Mm. They no longer have to die from common common diseases. Mm. So because of that advancement, they are they are living on longer. Then also, people have changed in their lifestyles. We are seeing people adopting healthy lifestyles mm. and their health seeking behavior has also improved. Yes. We see people having regular checkups, going to the gyms. You've seen very many gyms around. Mm. People trying to exercise to keep fit. And also they are now working and they can afford access to health, to medication and mm. also know how to feed themselves and get the right nutrition they need. What, so what's the average age you would say in Uganda that people die currently the life expectancy is at 56 mm. percent mm. but people we've seen people living as as long as 100 plus mm. so if you take care of yourself and you know what to eat you know how mm. to treat yourself take the right medication mm. you can really be guaranteed living longer yeah. Yeah. so all this is because of the right use of medicine it is an interaction between the lifestyles and the right use of medicine. Oh, wow. Yeah. Now, Jacqueline, why are the elderly of great concern when using medicine? Well, the Before, elderly... Introduce yourself and then tell us. Okay, my name is Jacqueline Nasuna. I'm yes. a pharmacist and I work with the National Drug Authority. Mm. And we believe that the elderly are of great concern because they're the people who are growing old, so their mm. bodies are changing. Oh. Yes, so we find that all these vital organisms of the body are reducing in function. Mm. So we need to take good care of them because as they get old, they are susceptible to very many medication problems mm. or very many sicknesses. We find one person having over five diseases. Mm. So that means they are going to be taking many More drugs. Mm, yeah. And if their bodies are not functioning that well, that means they are more likely to get more side effects from these drugs and even drug interactions. Mm. So we have, we have to be very cautious as we're giving them these drugs. We have to give them the right dose of the drug mm. because their bodies are not as, as strong as, as, strong as the young are. people mm. is. That's why we have to be of great concern to the elderly people. You work in drugs. One might say you're a drug dealer, but no, <laughs> necessarily. So, uh, what are the most uh, diseases that are attacking the older people in Uganda? Okay, as people get older, they tend to have diseases like diabetes, mm. uh, high blood pressure. They complain of back issues, back pain, the likes of arthritis. Mm. We have cancer coming in. So as you get old, even your health most times is deteriorating. So these people are actually suffering from very many ailments. Now, you said <coughs> we must be really cautious when we are giving older people medicine. Yeah? What are some of the problems that are likely to affect the older people in the use of this medicine? Uh, number one, these people, as they get old, they tend to forget. Mm. So remembering their medication is already another problem. Mm. So you find someone has to take maybe their medicine three times a day and they don't able to remember that well. So that's already another problem they are facing. Then number two, we have problems with the cost of drugs. Mm -hmm. You know very well as people get old, they are retiring yeah. and their financial muscle is not that strong. Mm. And drugs, the good drugs are also expensive. So the cost of drugs become a problem to their side. Mm. Then they have problems with side effects that come as a result of taking these drugs. You find one person is having maybe high blood pressure, having diabetes, diabetes all these all these problems have drugs to take mm. 
and with mixing up these drugs, you end up ha having side effects. Mm -hmm. You find you're taking a drug that can make you drowse a bit as you're working, people tend to maybe fall, get into accident. Mm -hmm. So all these problems come as a result of taking a number of these drugs. Then you have what you call drug interactions. Mm -hmm. As you take one drug with another one, you expect one drug maybe to affect the activity of the other drug in the body. Yeah. So <coughs> when you're having an, an a cancer drug, you're taking something for diabetes, something for back pain. Yeah. All this mix-up can also be another problem to our people. Oh, wow. Yes. If you have just joined us, we are talking about safe use of medicine in older people. And when I say older people, these are people above 60 years of, old, 60 years, okay. years of age. And this might be your mother, your father, your grandma, your papa. I think it's great, great care that you have to give while you're uh, giving these people medicine. Now, we, uh, Jacqueline, you've talked about all these problems that come with the use of medicine, wrong use of medicine. Mm. Emily, I'll, I'll go to you. Mm. What can be done to help older people in, to use this medicine safely? Because, I mean, it's life-threatening. Yeah, indeed, it's life-threatening, as she has said, as my colleague has said. Mm. There are quite a number of medicines that older persons take due to the various uh, ailments that uh, are affecting them. Yeah. So it would be good for the older person or to be the older person to make a list of all the medicines that they are taking, and if they can't do it, be assisted by their caregivers, and they take a list of all the medicines they are taking. Mm. So they know that <coughs> this medicine, I'm taking it for diabetes, this medicine, I'm taking it for hypertension, mm. or these are maybe calcium supplements, so that when they go to the community pharmacy to secure those medicines, at least the person will know these are the medicines this p the older person is taking. Mm. And in case there may be any duplication, they can easily give advice to the older person. Or if there may be these medicines that may cause, um, they may cause some, which may have side, side effects, can also be, they can also be helped at that time. Yeah. And once they know the medicines they are taking, they should w we always advise older persons to move along with those medications, with those medication lists to mm. every health center. Because in case they are changing maybe from one doctor to the next, the other doctor needs to be advised to see what yeah. medicines have they been taking so they can, they don't have to prescribe uh, the similar medicine, sorry, type of medicine in case maybe it's not working. Mm. Then also, well, as, she, as my colleague has still said, older persons forget, as we grow yeah. old, we forget. We need to clearly indicate the medicines, the sequence of of the of the uptake of the medicines, are we taking them in the morning? Are we taking them in the afternoon? And how many? How if how many tablets we need to? You know, as you know, older persons majority are illiterate, yeah. so we need to clearly indicate to them and talk to them and explain to them that these medicines will be taken in these quantities yeah. and at this time. And also, it's always advisable that uh, these medicines can be attached to daily activities. For instance. You ask the older person, you wake up in the morning, after brushing, you'll have to take the medicine. Mm. They may be uh, during breakfast, you take the medicine. During lunch time, before you take a nap in the afternoon, and then before you sleep, mm. for bedtime. So we should attach those sequence of taking medicine to the daily activities mm. of older persons so that they get <coughs> to know how best they can take these medicines. So And also, these medicines shouldn't only be limited to, to, to the, the other... The contemporary medicine, even the herbal medicines, should also be si put into the program of mm. older person. Mm. And also, we advise that in case there is an option, maybe with physiotherapy, because of the the deteriorating health of older persons and the energies, we would advise not to have a lot of medicines in the older person's body, mm. so that we keep them still strong and we encourage them to feed well. Mm. Feeding in, in aging is very important because these medicines are strong, and older persons need to feed and ensure that the medicines are absorbed by quickly the food. by the no by the food but at least the body is strong enough to absorb, absorb the, 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 the medicine the medicine and the, all that yeah some of the things the you're saying um really it got to me and i feel like most of the elderly people are facing these problems because of lack of aid aid in terms of um, someone to be to there help to, them. To, to help them, them. is there some uh, plan to create more like a rehabilitation center or an elderly uh, home or something? Yeah, now <coughs> the government policy mm. is not to institutionalize persons yeah. straight from children to older persons. Mm. We're encouraging community care. Mm. 
Because before people were caring for their older persons. Yeah. Why should it change now? <laughs> we were caring for older persons before. Yes. And uh, we are not <clears throat> encouraging taking older persons to institutions. Mm. But we are looking at the best modalities on how best can we take care of older persons within the communities because we don't want to disintegrate them. Mm. Imagine you're staying in this community for all this time, then because of an ailment you're disintegrated, you'll miss all your... Uh, you've grown up, you're seeing your, your friends, family. your family, your interactions. Mm. I mean, at that age to have a whole new setup mm. and for an older person, it's not quite easy to adjust. So we want to see, we are still looking, at, actually as the ministry, we want to develop a nas national care guidelines. Mm. And these care guidelines should see, taking someone to a residential area should be that person who really needs specialized care. Mm. But if we're talking about giving someone medication, we should encourage our people to take care of their children, of their parents, because mm. these parents have taken care of them. Parents have done a lot. They have done their part. Mm. Fine, there is a lot of um, urbanization, many issues. Yeah. People have moved. I'm sure some of us are not easy to see our yeah. parents quite often, but there must be means. Even within the communities, this, uh, these older persons don't live in isolation. They live within a set of communities. And there are those community mechanisms that should be used and should be reinforced mm -hmm. to ensure that older persons are taken care of. Taking them to institutions should be the last, last resort, as in the last one. Mm. So we shouldn't encourage as government. We should stay take, Ugandans. <laughs> we should stay within the communities and ensure and that our, our, people. our mm. people within the communities are able to help older persons as they have done, because they have contributed to national development. Mm. Well, we need to look into mechanisms that the ministry are going to look into and need to do like a study on how best can communities help older persons. To ensure Jacqueline, that we stay within the community. I'm sure so many people who are watching are wondering, ah, when I get old, I don't want to be like that. <laughs> I, don't want to, I don't want to have to be taking a lot of medicine. You, are, you work with the National Drug Authority, and I'm sure you have um, expertise in medicine and health. What are some of the things young people should do and to make sure that they're healthier? Because I'll give you an example. Our president... He's over 70, but you see he's a strong man. Yeah? So what are some of the things young people should do to make sure that they live a healthier, elderly life? Okay, as young people, we should be able to live better lifestyles. Let's be people who go out there and exercise, mm. find time to exercise, so that you keep your body fit mm. and away from all these kind of conditions like diabetes, hypertension. Then let's also eat healthier foods. Mm. Yes, it's not always about eating the KFC, <laughs> 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 yes, the Java okay. all the time. Let's right. have healthier foods mm. sometimes. Mm. Let's have more of the vegetables as well as part of our diet mm. so that we can keep in shape. Mm. Yes. No booze. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, taken, but maybe in, qua in limited quantities. quantities. Yeah. <laughs> Some people get excited and they. Yeah? <laughs> It and the second part in manageable quantities. Mm. Maybe to add on also, you know, when people are old, it's not that they cannot still continue to exercise. Yeah. You can still exercise, but of course not these vigorous exercises like people are training to go for, mar for this big marathon. Yeah. This, the, what's this gentleman who won for us the gold medal? Uh, uh, <laughs> 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 no, just to ensure yeah, that their bodies their are maintained, bodies are fit, are fit and um, they are maintained. Mm. And also nutrition is still key for, for older persons. Mm. You know, you find in the villages, I think it may happen the same. Older persons don't want to have eggs. They say, ah, eggs are for young people. <laughs> but then they still need those nutrients. <laughs> I, is this true? Uh, why? Where I come from, all, like my grandmother wasn't eating chicken. Ah, eating eggs. Because of the culture. Yeah, because she of the culture. Yeah. So there are those cultural dimensions that are limiting older persons mm. from getting the appropriate. And also there is the way older people are, especially those mm. who are staying with their orphans and other vulnerable children. Yeah. When they are eating, they, uh, they see this child has finished, they try to add. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that's culture. Yeah, 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 it does. So you it find does. that um, older people eat less. Yeah. And since they eat less, their bodies become weak, yet they are still working. Majority of older persons are engaged in farming. The food mm. we are eating here in Kampala is being 
being farmed by older persons. Mm. They still need this energy if we are to continue. So we need to encourage the right nutrition for older persons. Mm. We need to encourage older persons living. And there's what we call active aging. Mm. You should age actively. Don't <laughs> age and become frail. You should continue living that good life mm. when you're even old. You talked about eggs. And mm. uh, it, it got me thinking that so many of us actually don't know what a balanced diet is. Who is going to help us understand this? Because sometimes we, uh, we are told, ah, you should eat well, you should uh, have a balanced diet, this and mm. that. But we don't know exactly what kind of foods are good for us, what kind of foods are good for elderly people. Okay. Grace? So mm. when it happens with a balanced diet, we are looking at foods that have all the nutrients <coughs> you need. Mm. So if you're able to have a bit of the protein, that's an egg, mm. then you should have a bit of a carbohydrate. Mm -hmm. Then we should have also um, the vitamins attached. Mm -hmm. You should have some bit of other supplements, like calcium supplements, so that you're able to have something which is wholly mm -hmm. taken. Milk. Yes. Don't to take food from one category. Mm -hmm. You're eating bread. You're Rolex. eating a ro eh? bread. <laughs> you're eating bread. Porridge. Every porridge <laughs> yes. <laughs> so gum all you in one combination. <laughs> yes. You may even have mm -hmm. porridge and, and maize. <laughs> I have yeah. done that before. Sure. Honestly, because <laughs> I think uh, sometime back in primary or something, I, you used to have breakfast at school and they would give you porridge. You mm -hmm. have this nice porridge and then uh, probably they packed for you some cassoli, you know, boiled cassoli. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's typically eating the same thing. The same thing. Mm. Wow. But some of the foods that are available to us nowadays in mm. Kampala especially because people are kind of like moving away from farming. Mm. Sure. Uh, we have Rolex. We have uh, Chikomando, which is again chapati and beans. We have posho, we have matoke, we have uh, rice. Those are the common, common foods. We have milk, eggs, bread. Are these good foods for elderly people, Grace? Yes. We yes have no? some, yes, for a certain percentage. Mm. Because the elderly people, as they also get old, mm. they end up with bone issues like their bones are getting weak. Mm. So they need some calcium supplementation. Mm. And some of this we can get through foods which have like the eggs, mm. some milk. extended milk. So yes. eggs are very important. Yeah, they're important, but milk. to mm. a certain extent also. Don't forget to give them the likes of vegetables so that mm. they can keep their digestive system also in the right. Mm. And the water. Yes, and the water, you mm. know. We have to make sure they, the meal is balanced. As they get old, we have to make sure they, they eat food in the right way. Yes. Well, if you have just joined us, we are talking about medicine use in elderly people now. Some of the things we have outlined is making sure that you feel well, your elderly person. You give them the right medicine. Uh, try to keep them exercised here and there. Not vigorously, like you're going for a marathon or something, but small, small, simple exercises so that mm. your body keeps in shape. And this could be your father, your grandmother. It is important to keep them healthy. Now, before we leave, uh, Grace, Just if me. I need information on how to, um, the right ways of medicine use for elderly people, where do I go? Okay, for the right medicine use, mm. we advise our people to consult with their medical practitioners. If mm. you see a doctor mm. and you're their daily client, mm. try to inquire from them how best you can use your drugs, mm. they'll be able to give you the right response. Mm. Then most of us at least have a community pharmacy we attach to. We, mm. ad we always advise our people, as you get older, as you keep having all these kind of problems and you take these drugs, mm. it's good to attach yourself to a pharmacy and be able to keep your records of the drugs you take. Mm. Mm. The pharmacists in our pharmacies have the right information. They are well knowledgeable about these drugs, let's mm. take good advantage of them. Yes. Inquire from them, they will tell you whether this drug is good for you or it's not good for you, mm. whether to change it or not. Mm. And you also, as the National Drug Authority, we have a directorate of product safety. Mm. We ensure that, we want to ensure that our people get the right drugs, the mm. safe drugs. Mm. So you can reach to us in case of any inquiries. Mm -hmm. We any have numbers? a WhatsApp line. Oh, that is zero seven nine one forty one five 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 five. So you can reach to us on that WhatsApp line, you're able to answer any of your inquiries. Then you also have um, an Inside. email, yes. Mm -hmm. You can reach us on drug info mm -hmm. 
at nda.or.gg mm -hmm. for any of your drug inquiries. Then you can also reach our Facebook page, National Drug Authority. Mm. You're able to reach to us through that page as well. Mm. Even our website, www.nda.or.gg. Mm. We're able to get all the information. And we keep advising our people to reach to us. Tell us what you're facing, the drug, maybe some of those adverse drug reactions that can come as using some mm. drugs which you're not sure about. <coughs> and we're able to reach out to our public and be able to disseminate all this information so that our people are getting the right safe and efficacious and drugs. Yes. Emily, any last few words? Yeah, any last word is that um, there is, globally, there is a big, a, a big revolution among older persons. Mm. The world is aging very fast. Actually, it's estimated that by 2050, or there will be more older persons than even the young ones. So we should begin thinking on how best can we age. Mm. We should begin thinking on you're getting old. You should be there and, be, and ensure that you have enough resources to take care of yourselves. For mm -hmm. us who are working now, mm. all of us who are working now. Yes. Because we, we will not be able to expect our children to yeah. take care of us. For us to be able to get the best medicines to take care of us in old age, we must start investing now. Mm. Because the world is aging very fast mm. and it may catch us unaware when we are not prepared. Good enough, at least we are, having, we are bringing on stakeholders to ensure that we integrate older persons' issues in every aspect, mm. in health, in even education, that's long life learning, to ensure that at least older persons are not left behind. Mm. As you know, the sustainable development goals are emphasizing not leaving anyone behind. So we want to really ensure that older persons' issues are mainstreamed. And now for more information about issues of aging and policy, mm. we are located at Simba Manyo Building, that is the Ministry of Gender Labor and Social Development. When you come to Simba Manyo building, that's just behind CPS. Eh? Mm. You come to first floor because we are old. For us, we're on the first floor. <laughs> <laughs> you just come to first floor. You can't floor. go. <laughs> yeah, you find, you look for the Department yes. of Disability and Elderly. Right. We are combined because you know as you age also, mm. some it issues comes. of disability set in. Mm. So you come to first floor, you can ask for the commissioner or ask for Emily. All right. Yeah, thank you. Okay, you had it there. Uh, if you want more information on medicine news in adult elderly people please call uh or whatsapp the number zero seven nine one four one five 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 or go to the facebook page of national drug authority and to keep in touch with what we have here on everyday life morning at ntv go to our facebook page which is morning at ntv or ntv uganda or go to our website www.ntv.co.ug and talk to us if you want to follow me or talk to me i am at idris matu Twitter, Facebook, everything now. Stick around. After this, we are having Mwasuza Mutia, and tomorrow we are having more interesting interviews on everyday life. Have a very good morning. My name is Idris Matu, and stay safe. Africa's biggest star, the star boy, Wizkid, live in Kampala. Thursday, 7th December, at Lukoko Cricket Oval. Full cover is